the South Koreans are at the top of their game and they've designed a car for the future both inside and out. I'm Luke and this is my tech focused review of the Hyundai Ioniq 5 including the updates for the 2023 variant. Now make sure you hit that subscribe button below like if you're enjoying the content and notification bell so we'll let you know the next time there's a new episode. I'm Luke and welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now today we have a first on the channel, a particular feature of this vehicle which we haven't seen in any other vehicle yet, but more on that a little bit later. Now if you were to dream of the car of the future, chances are you'd end up with a design similar to this one. A guaranteed head turner when you see it on the road. Now the Ionic 5 launched in 2021, but it's been given a 2023 update to a few noticeable features in the underlying tech, but we'll get into that a little bit later. Let's talk a bit about this platform. So the Ionic 5 is built on the Hyundai developed EGMP platform, electric global modular platform. Now this vehicle platform is shared by a number of full electric models, including the Kia EV6, the Genesis GV60, and the newer Hyundai Ionic 6. Now this new platform allows for faster charging, better handling, excellent interior space, and of course, performance. Now Hyundai have developed their own electric motors for this vehicle. They are of course permanent magnet synchronous motors and you can get a single motor variant or you can get the dual motor variant with a motor both in the front and the rear of the vehicle. Now that single motor variant gives you 225 horsepower and 350 newton meters of torque and for the courageous ones who get the dual motor variant you get 302 horsepower or 605 newton meters of torque. Now this means that you can go from 0 to 100 in the single motor variant in 7.3 seconds. What's more impressive though is 80 to 120 kilometers per hour in just 4.6 seconds. Now if you get that dual motor variant you obviously get faster acceleration. In fact the dual motor variant goes from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 5.2 seconds. And I've been told that's a conservative number from Hyundai. In fact, other reviewers have tested that and they have gotten faster results. If you have a Hyundai Ionic 5, let us know what your 0 to 100 speed is in the comment section below. Now, I haven't really talked about this much on the channel, but this electric motor developed by Hyundai themselves achieves 17,000 revolutions per minute and is able to deliver power bursts of over 20,000 RPM. Now the cool thing here is not so much the revolutions which are quite significant nonetheless but the cooling technology which has to be employed to make sure the components of this vehicle, the motor components, don't get too hot at those high RPMs which is in fact why they are employing a number of cooling technologies, including the active air cooling system, which is found in the front of the vehicle, which is mainly there to cool the motor, but also the battery, but more on the cooling of the battery a bit later on. So battery pack is found under the passenger compartment, and there are two different battery size options for this vehicle, the larger of which has actually been upgraded for this 2023 model. So that smaller battery pack is 58 kilowatt hour pack, which is made up of 24 individual modules and a total of 288 individual battery cells, which are in the pouch format in this case. The larger battery, new for 2023, 77.4 kilowatt hours, 32 modules, and for a total of 384 individual battery cells. Now those battery cells are coming from battery supplier SK Innovation. They are NCM, nickel, cobalt and manganese cells. 
The modules and pack assembly is being done by a subsidiary of Hyundai Hyundai Mobis. Then it is assembled into the vehicle by Hyundai at their factories. Now the Ionic 5 is one of the most reliable EVs when it comes to the battery tech. In a world where we have seen battery recalls taking place, the Ionic 5 is so far maintaining a very high standard. So besides the active cooling vents found in the front, which are primarily cooling that motor, but also the battery pack and other components underlying the electric nature of this vehicle, the battery pack itself is being liquid cooled. Now it is being cooled at the module level thanks to a cooling plate found beneath those modules. So under each module we have a thermal gel, which sort of makes contact with the cooling plate found under at the very bottom of the vehicle. Now, in order to avoid the uneven cooling or heating across the pack, there are two cooling loops. The incoming loop and outgoing loop run side by side. And this is important because it avoids the situation where modules at the front of the cooling loop get better cooling than modules at the end of the cooling loop. In this case, this is not the case since we have these two loops running side by side. So in this 2023 variant, battery heater comes as standard. And that's important for charging because if you're going to be DC rapid charging this vehicle, particularly in highway situations, what it does is once you've plugged in a DC rapid charger into the sat nav of the vehicle, the car will preheat the battery before you arrive at that charger, which means once you plug in, it is ready to charge at full speed, which is different in the older Ionic models and other electric vehicles around, where if you're in a, especially in a country where you have cold temperature, you may not get the charging, the highest charging speed available as the battery will not be at the correct temperature. Battery heater in this car avoids that problem. Now for the first time on this channel, we have an 800 volt architecture. The other cars we've seen on this channel, 400 volt architecture. And that means something very important. More volts means faster charging. And this car can charge at an eye-watering 350 kilowatts on DC rapid charging station. That means a full charge of the large battery is done in just 18 minutes. Now, let's be honest here. That is a bit of a utopian world. And while there are 350 kilowatt chargers available on the European network, here in Malta, at the moment, and in a lot of places around the world, to be fair, fastest rapid chargers, DC rapid chargers, 50 kilowatts. So the car is capable of charging up to seven times as fast as the current fastest DC rapid charging architecture. But we will get there one day. Now, of course, besides DC rapid charging, you have AC charging in the vehicle. 7 kilowatts maximum on single phase or 10.5 kilowatts maximum on three phase. You are going to charge faster on a three phase supply. So if you get the larger variant of this vehicle, here's how fast you can charge on AC, both on single phase and three phase supply. If you get the smaller variant, this is how much it will take to charge this vehicle on single phase and three phase once again. Now, of course, as I say many times on the channel, these are the fastest speeds possible. If you've got the correct charging infrastructure, the correct cable, then you're going to get those speeds. If you're not using the correct architecture and correct cable, you are going to probably get a lesser speed, which means longer charging times. So this car comes with three levels of regen, which are controlled from the paddle shifters behind the steering wheel, as we've seen on some other EVs on the channel. But they also have their iPedal mode, which is a one pedal driving mode. That means you can drive this car literally using the gas pedal. The car will come to a complete stop once you release your foot from the accelerator. And I've said it time and time again, once you have this feature, you do not go back. Rather than the three pedals in your old manual car, one pedal driving, definitely for the win, especially in traffic. Now the pedal shifters are positioned behind the steering wheel because if you're driving downhill, you can actually drive the car without using the gas or brake pedal, but just by controlling the level of regen. 
it's a new way of driving, a new experience, and it will take some getting used to. But this is why some automakers are including the regen selection mode right behind the steering. So they are encouraging you to drive the car in this manner. So the smaller battery variant of this vehicle has a 384 WLTP range. Larger battery, that's 77.4 kilowatt hour, gives a range which matches its big brother, the EV6, of 481 kilometers or 460 if you're opting for that more powerful dual motor version. So this is plenty of range, nearly 500 kilometers of WLTP. And as a reminder, here in Malta, a hot country, a country where it barely gets cold ever, that's a good range because the closer we are to that 25 degrees Celsius, the more chance you have of hitting WLTP. And many EV drivers in our climate and our driving conditions are able to meet WLTP if not exceeded in some cases with some careful driving. Now it is an optional feature, but this car has vehicle to load. And this is the vehicle to load adapter that you can get for your Hyundai Ioniq. And this is probably the coolest feature ever because what this is, is this end plugs into the charging socket of the vehicle. This end, once you open it up, is a standard domestic socket. In our case, the British standard socket. And you can power up to 3.5 kilowatts worth of appliances from the car's high voltage battery. An ideal accessory if you're going camping, maybe you want to turn on a little stove or something like that, or if you're going filming and you want to power up some lights or, or, or camera equipment or whatever your field is, I'm sure you're going to find a good use for the vehicle to load adapter. Besides this adapter on the outside of the car, which is optional and must be purchased as an extra, the car does have a three pin socket at the back, which again can be used to power appliances like charging your laptop and other things. And this is besides that 12 volt standard adapter, right? This is a normal domestic socket as you would expect. And we're starting to see it come across in a few electric cars, but Hyundai are definitely one of those brands which are pushing this the most. Now, another very cool feature about this car is a feature you get from the key fob. And you might have seen me trying this out earlier this week in the trailer. Basically, it's the ability to, without getting in the car, turning on the vehicle and reversing it or moving it forward from the key fob. That's ideal if you're in a small parking bay and the person next to you has really sort of gotten up up close and you cannot get into the car easily no problem just turn it on reverse it out get in and then you're on your way so special thanks to hyundai malta and motorsync for letting us review the hyundai ionic 5 today shout out to maverick today for helping out with all the technical if you thought this review was useful make sure you hit the like button and share it with someone who finds this tech focused content useful and interesting to them Subscribe button if you haven't. And as always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.